morning, everyone. So today I'm very excited to talk about the fundamentals of the housing market, and we are going to take a closer look at Los Angeles. So let me begin with this chart, which shows the ratio of the median home price to the median household income in 2016 for the major uh, metropolitan area in the U.S. So the higher the ratio, the less affordable of the house in that area. So in this chart, the green bar represents national average, the red bar represents uh, metro in California. So as we can see, most of California metro are less affordable. And uh, you can see number one is Los Angeles, followed by San Jose, San Francisco. Yeah. So basically, homes in California are expensive. And <laughs> renters' life are not easier, all right? So we found out renters in California also paid a higher portion of their incomes on rentals. So this chart shows the ratio of the median rent to the median household income in 2016. So again, most of the California metro are less affordable for renters. And again, Los Angeles is number one. So basically, you can see 50%. So renters need to pay uh, more than half of their income in Los Angeles. All right. So the question is, why are California house so expensive? OK. So the simple answer is, because of the fundamentals of demand and supply. So there's a high demand of California real estate, as we all know, because of its uh, rich natural amenity. Like uh, this picture, um, a beautiful ocean, beach, bombing weather, sunny weather. Right? For most of Americans, also wealthy international investors. But there's more. So here, let me give you an example uh, for two variables over the past three years. All right. So horizontal access represents the annual job creation for the major metros. All right. And the vertical access represents the, the housing permit. All right. So horizontal access is like a, a demand for housing, and the vertical is a supply for housing. So by and large, you can see some kind of positive relationship. Like a big metro like New York, they produce more jobs, they build more housing units. As opposed to Austin, smaller metro, you know, they had a, a less uh, supply and less job creation. All right. But there's more. Uh, so we find out there's some kind of dispersion along this red line. So we can say the red line is like an average. So for New York, over the past three years, average every year, they create 60,000 units to support 180,000 jobs. So it's like one additional unit, three additional jobs, right? So let's look at the California metros. So we can see they are all below the red line. And what does that mean? It means California are underbuilt. Let me give you an example for Los Angeles. For example, Los Angeles probably, they, uh, we make uh, 90,000 jobs, you know? Uh, on average over the past three years. So based on the national average, we are supposed to build 30,000 units. But in reality, we only provide 20,000 units. So we create more jobs than Seattle, DC, Austin, but they produce more housing units than Los Angeles. So basically, limited housing supply to meet the demand is the major reason uh, for our home, high home price. All right, so right now let's take a closer look at the home price uh, 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 detail in Los Angeles Metro. All right, so here I show you the median home price by zip code in Los Angeles County and Orange County. All right, so right now the question is what explains the disparity of the home prices by zip code uh, in Los Angeles Metro? All right. Um, I don't have enough time, so if you want to know more detail, read the, uh, my article in the forecast book. But in the following slide, I'm going to show you uh, several major factors okay, by showing their uh, simple correlation. And then at the end, I will put all those factors together to see if each of them still predict this kind of uh, home price dis disparity. So number one, rent. Explain most of the variation of home price 
of z code. So in this chart, the blue dot, each dot represent one z code. So horizontal axis is the monthly rent, the vertical is the median home price. So by large, we can see some kind of strong correlation. So that makes sense. In theory, we know the home price should be the, the, the present value of the all future uh, rental uh, revenue of the house. So this makes sense. Number two, human capital index, which is a calculated based on the average education attainment of residents. So uh, in this chart, the horizontal axis is the city human capital index I developed several years ago. Higher the number, it means the uh, residents are more educated. Okay, so basically we can see some kind of uh, positive correlation. All right, so that also makes sense because we know zip code with uh, more educated residents, they tend to have a higher income, more productive, higher purchasing power, good school, and lower crime. So that makes sense to support higher home price. So number three, natural amenities. Here we develop a very simple indicator to measure uh, intensity of natural amenity in Los Angeles, which is the distance a miles from the ocean. All right. So it makes sense, right? So closer to the ocean, you see more uh, uh, natural amenities. So here we find the, the horizontal axis is the distance uh, from the nearby ocean. So Lancaster is way far away, right? We see the lower home price. And Santa Monica is just right next to the ocean, so higher home price. So that also makes sense. Okay. So right now, uh, this chart shows uh, the density of Chinese or Chinese American population by zip code. So why I show this chart to you guys? So the red color represents more Chinese population here. Because over the years, we heard a lot of uh, anecdotal story about Chinese investor coming here buying property, so drawing out a home price. So we want to know if this is the truth, although we don't have enough data set. So, so this is what we do. We run the regression, control all other factors. So if the zip code with higher Chinese population, uh, with higher home price, pr price premium, then we, maybe we can say that is because uh, uh, we, we see more Chinese investors. Because we know Chinese investors tend to buy the property in the area with more Chinese uh, 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 residents present because of the easy grocer, Chinese grocery stores, restaurants, and uh, easy communication uh, with Mandarin. So the evidence is yes. Yeah. So basically, this is just simple correlation, but we already see some kind of uh, positive correlation, like Arcadia, St. Mary, Irvine, higher uh, 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 Chinese uh, population, higher home price. After controlling other factors, the correlation becomes stronger. All right. So here I show you this chart. The red color area represents more younger generation living in that area, millennial, from age 25 to 34. So, um, so the reason we do this is we want to know, because I find out there's a some kind of correlation. How does it impact a home price? The answer is positive. After controlling all other variables, we find the z code with more millennial uh, 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 concentration had a higher home price, higher price premium. And why is that? We suspect the reason is because millennials tend to choose the place to lead with more cultural amenity, like this kind of urban dynamics and vibrancy. And those kind of things nowadays are correlated with a high home price. All right. So right now, we put all these factors together, and they still hold true. You know, they're still uh, significant to a correlated home, home price. So rents, positive. Human capital, positive. Chinese, actually, I found that not just Chinese, Asian population, Foreign bond population also positive with the home price, millennial positive, and distant from the ocean negative. All right, and even finally, housing supply. So we had the data of the new home supply by zip code. So the zip code with more housing supply tend to have a lower home price, you know, compared to otherwise. So it's kind of echo what we say in the beginning. So there's a one more thing I want to say from this slide is a. Uh, 
uh, recently I got a lot of questions from, uh, 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 from, from the uh, people saying, uh, is Los Angeles housing market a bubble? Right, this is a big question. So based on this, I will say this. These are all fundamentals, especially Chinese, Asian, foreign born. You know, if that is a supply buyer, then I would say maybe we are in bubble, but they are not. They are super prime actually, right? They, they are buying property with all cash or higher uh, uh, down payment. And, and other are all uh, 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 fundamental factor. Demand, strong demand represent good fundamental. Personally, I think the limited supply is the bad fundamental, but it's still fundamental. So I, I'm not that worried about this kind of bubble uh, situation in Los Angeles right now. Okay, conclusion. High rents and home prices in California and Los Angeles are due to combination of demand and supply factors, amenity, job growth, and long-term restricting housing supply. Human capital disparity by Zico across Los Angeles explain a lot of the disparity of the home price in Los Angeles. Distance from ocean is a simple and good indicator of natural amenities in Los Angeles. Chinese, Asian, foreign investors draw the home prices. Millennials tend to live in the neighborhood with more cultural amenities, urban vibrancy, which are correlated with high home prices. So thank you very much. Thank you.